So this is examples of modular encryption or encryption using modular arithmetic. I'm going to show two ways using modular addition, which is the simplest um, idea of using modular arithmetic, and then modular multiplication. And then a, a SQL video will talk about uh, some varieties of using exponents in modular arithmetic to encrypt. So I'm organizing this all on a Google Sheet because uh, it's just a good way to collect all the information and write it down. And Google Sheets like Excel, which is pretty much any spreadsheet, does have a mod function that I'll show you um, that can be useful for these cases. Warning, when you get to exponentiation, do not use it. It will give you the wrong answer in almost all interesting cases. But I'll talk about that more in the next video. Okay, so I've got the message. I just put in to be or not to be. And uh, following the book's uh, suggestion, just as a sort of basic way to get those letters to be numbers in a way that produces some moderately interesting numbers, uh, we're gonna divide it up into two letter blocks, to be or N-O-T-T-O-B, and then E dash, just to have um, something to fill out that last space. And then uh, each of those two letter blocks, the letters get translated into what their position in the alphabet and then just smush together. So T is the 20th letter in the alphabet, O is the 15th, so 2015. B is the second, so that's like O2, E is O5, so it only ends up being 205, that's fine. O is the 15th, R is the 18th, so 1518. Similarly, let's see, OB is a little interesting. That's the 15th letter and the second letter, so it's 1502. So you really want to put in, for those first uh, nine letters in the alphabet, you want to think of it as O2 or O5 or whatever. And if it comes first, the leading zero gets dropped as usual. If it comes second, like in OB, then it doesn't get dropped. Since this is not 152, that would be very different. So 1502. And then yeah, the, the dash is the 27th quote letter. And so this is 0527. Okay, so we've got some four digit numbers made out of letters. And now we just want to do some modular arithmetic to those to scramble them and um, make them a little bit more um, secure to encrypt them. So I picked a, for addition, I picked a pretty random mod. Anything that's big enough to accommodate all the different two letter, all the numbers that are coming from two letters. So anything bigger than 2727 is going to work. The key, you can basically pick just about anything, but you probably don't want to pick one. Uh, or something really small because you're not going to change stuff very much and it might be your answer might be guessable It's nice to have some something where at least most of the numbers at least cycle around um, To get a little bit of scrambling now obviously modular addition is so wonderfully simple that it's not going to scramble it much This is not the point. It's really a warm-up, but anyway, I would choose a key that's um, At least say half of the mod. Okay, so now I filled in a few of them already automatically um, but let me just show you what, what you would do, for example, with um, a spreadsheet. This works pretty much identically in Excel and in Google Sheets. So you do equals to put in a formula. That's how you do uh, start a formula for any spreadsheet with an equals. And then I just put mod of, and then I want to do the arithmetic operation. So the input plus, that's C5 it turns out, and you just click plus the key, and then comma the mod. So it's just mod of something, comma the, uh, the mod, mod of whatever number you want to mod, comma the mod that you're modding with, and you say mod a lot and it works. Okay, and you can check if you don't believe me, 2015 plus 2783, mod 3120 is really 1678. Okay, and then you could just keep doing the same thing. There's various ways to automate this if you know anything about um, spreadsheets, but um, that's, that would be for a different video. I don't really want to bother talking about um, how to automate formulas and spreadsheets. Um, if you want to know, ask me. And then so that plus the key and the mod. Not so bad, okay. And any kind of calculator, um, Desmos, I think, has this. Lots of calculators have a mod function. Scratch, almost any programming language, if you want to program this, of course, that's totally acceptable. Um, and this works fine as long as the numbers don't get too big, and in particular, as long as the numbers don't get start, start getting rounded off by the computer. If they do, you're absolutely toast. You'll get absolutely nonsensical answers. Okay, but here it's fine. They're not going to round these four-digit numbers. Um, okay, so there's our encrypted message. Um, and then to decrypt it, you would just add the additive inverse of this key, which is not too hard to figure out. You just subtract it from 3120.
Okay, so going on to multiplication, very, very similar idea. Here, I'm keeping the same mod, okay? Uh, my key, I have to be a little more careful now. It has to be relatively prime to 3120, or else I'm gonna get collisions uh, where the same plain text number might go to, uh, my different plain text number, sorry, would go to the same uh, ciphertext number. But I picked seven, because it's not too hard to factor 3120. It is not divisible by seven. And so seven is, uh, since it's prime and it's not a divisor of 3120, it is in fact relatively prime to 3120. So here again, very, very similar mod of the plain text number, now times the key, and then mod the mod. Yay. Okay. Um, and then I could do that again. If you're thinking, why doesn't he just copy and paste? That's where the slightly subtle issues of how do you copy and paste or make things systematic on a spreadsheet come in. Um, and I'm not going to talk about that. Um, and that's really not what I wanted. I wanted d5 times the key and then mod the mod. Okay, and then one more of e5 times the key mod 3120. Okay, now here's something where it's really not obvious whether we're getting the right answers because already multiplying by 7 mod 3120 you can't do it in your head very well. Here, I could at least check the last digit was right because the mod happened to be a multiple of 10, so the last digit should work, should all work mod 10. Okay, here, what I did, um, and what you should do anyway, is you should know what the decryption exponent is. Even if your job is not to decrypt your own, that own, your own message, you should actually be able to check it and tell somebody, hey, here's a hint how to decrypt it. So this decryption exponent, that's where it gets, the math gets a little interesting. That should be the modular multiplicative inverse of 7 mod 3120. Now, that's one of the things we do have the skills to find by hand using the extended Euclidean algorithm. Um, and if that's a challenge, then we should talk about it. Okay. But in any case, um, you can check, if you really want to check, that 7 times 1783 mod 3120 is indeed exactly 1. So that means that if I multiply this guy, let's try it mod the ciphertext times the decryption multiplier, again mod 3120, I should get what I started with, indeed, 2015, okay? And I could do that for here and here, but I don't think you need to see it. I already did it automatically for uh, 1415, uh, going to 40, 545, and then going back to 1415, etc. So this is a really good thing you should, you should do, at least for a few of your calculations, to check that this calculation showed up correctly. Because if you hand this to somebody and you haven't done the calculations correctly, they're, they're going to decrypt it maybe correctly and get garbage, and they're going to think, what? I can't have done this right. Okay, so be careful about that. And then in the next video, we'll talk about what about the exponentiation ciphers um, and what, do you, what are the extra things you have to be careful about with that.